Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, because yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, please send us your Holy Spirit in order for us to speak power to your word and be able to help those who are watching this program get enlightened by your grace and by your glory. May you bring a discerning spirit to me and to your viewers whom you have brought to this message. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, saints. That was a great prayer to remove the veil over our eyes and ears that the enemy continues to place on us. We welcome the Holy Spirit into today's message. Hallelujah and all glory to Yahweh. This is a call to arms. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Revelation 8, 2. To all my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time for us to reinforce God's armor. Take heed, lukewarm Christians. You need to start meditating on the Word on a daily basis. Make sure to read the Bible daily so your armor will begin to build up. The Word is our power as Christians. Every single one of us needs to be ready for the spiritual battle we are in the middle of. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. Revelation 3 verse 15 The signs of the times are now quickly aligning with biblical prophecy more than ever before. And God does not tolerate ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Hosea 4, 6. The devil is creating a path for the Antichrist. The truth is being warped, and people are now creating their own realities with their own truth and bastardizing the scriptures. The beliefs and morals of people have been rapidly corroded. Horns are being blown and the bowls are being poured. There are more dangerous storms occurring all over the world. There is an increase in global wars and rumors of new wars. There are more supernatural apparitions in the skies, at homes, and in many other places. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke, Acts 2, 19. We are being increasingly attacked day in and day out. Sage is not going to remove any of these evils in pure spirits. Crystals will not protect you from evil. Praying to statues or placing trinkets around the house will not bring peace. And money does not bring happiness. These are all empty presentations. Stop raising altars for other human beings known and unknown after they die. These are not memorials. With candles and gifts, these are altars. All these things are presentations made by men to praise other spirits other than to praise Jehovah Jireh, who deserves all our praises and worship. You should have no other gods before me. Exodus 20 verse 3. You should not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Exodus 25. These other trinkets and false doctrines are from the devil. Only the Word of God will give us everything we need, from peace of mind to salvation of the soul. If you have anxiety and depression, trust in the Word. If you are having financial problems, trust in the Word. But know this, hard times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, 
disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 Political and religious leaders are using scriptures to acquire power, money, and self-interest. And some are even misrepresenting the word for their own power and glory. And Jesus answered and said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Mark 12, verse 17. Media outlets, streaming platforms, virtual reality, and social media have become the devising tools of the enemy only to create chaos, confusion, and misguidance as well to distract us from the Word of God. Pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18 This in turn is making some of these people so angry that they are willing to kill each other, including babies for their own twisted beliefs. It is a battle created by the enemy so we can be distracted away from the true salvation, Christ Jesus of Nazareth. Saints, we are going through the times of sorrow, the times of labor pains as it is written. The enemy is getting desperate and time is of the essence. We need to bring this message to everyone. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these events are the beginning of labor pains. Matthew 24, 7-8 It is now time to build up our armor of faith. The armor of God. The enemy knows that without faith, the word will never work. Back, spawn of Satan! <laughs> Oh, really? You have to have faith for this to work on me. Stop! <laughs> the salt of the earth. We need to season the earth with our presence using the scriptures. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Matthew 5 verse 13. We must bring hope and faith back with the power of prayer. This is why we need to have the armor of God Understand that prayer is a declaration of war against the world and against the ruler of this world. This is why the world keeps us so busy and preoccupied with distractions so we don't pray and worship or follow the word. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 8. When was the last time you prayed with thanksgiving? When was the last time you spoke to God when everything in your life was going great? See, the enemy uses those gaps to infiltrate and corrupt our thoughts, to sear our souls. But don't worry. God always makes a way for a praying person. He will help you get back on track while putting a hedge of protection around you and those that are in Christ. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-17 Saints, do you eat every day? If you didn't, you will get weak and get sick. Do you breathe every day? If you didn't, you will surely die. Do you check your social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter every day? If you didn't, then you will be missing out on so many worldly things. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Ecclesiastes 1-2 In the same way, 
We need to read and meditate on the Word of God every single day. So our spirit will grow strong and able to handle everything that comes our way. We need to make time for the only one who has the power to decide where our spirits will end up after we die. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Matthew 7, 22 to 23. You can't believe in God, but not want to learn more about God to get his daily bread that will bless us and see us through any storm this abominable world will throw at us. I truly believe this is the generation that will not pass away when the Christ comes back again. Assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Matthew 24, 34. If that is the case, we must act now and arm ourselves with the tools Yahweh has given us. The scriptures. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty of God for pulling down strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10 4. The enemy, Satan, is a powerful and intelligent beast who knows the Word of God better than anyone alive. This is because he has lived it. We need to build our faith strong and reinforce our wisdom so we can be ready for battle. Jehovah has given us a lot of autonomy in using His Word to teach and help others, at the same time to protect ourselves from the enemy's attacks. Saints, we cannot be lukewarm Christians. We need to be soldiers of heaven in this abominable world. Prayer is the most powerful tool we have. We need to start with this. When Jesus was on this earth, he spent a majority of his time praying. When he went into the wilderness for 40 days, he was in prayer. Then after fasting for 40 days, he was tempted by the enemy. How did Jesus rebuke them? By telling him what was written in the scriptures. He answered, it is written, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. Remember that we have been given the power over the enemy and his minions. Look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. Luke 10, 19, 10. This is the promise to us if we build up our armor. We also have the name of Jesus to expel demons from our presence and clean the negativity around us. This is why the third commandment states, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Heed my words, Jesus' name is very powerful. It can topple mountains. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. Mark 16, verse 17. I remember one time, a few years ago, I was on a New York City subway platform with my young daughter, waiting for a train to arrive. There was a homeless person acting all erratic and very upset, cursing and carrying on, who had an impure spirit within them. I held my daughter close to me, closed my eyes, and began to say under my breath, Jesus of Nazareth, please take this impure spirit away from us. Protect us so no one on this platform gets hurt by it. I then proceeded to pray the Lord's Prayer. Still with my eyes closed, I was not worried about what was going around me. When I opened my eyes, the person was nowhere to be found. I looked up and down the platform and never saw them again. It was just as if they evaporated into thin air. The train eventually came and we went home. And this is not the first time that I had to use his name in order to clear impure spirits around me. I'm constantly doing it everywhere I go when somebody's acting a particular way. 
Saints, this is the power of using Jesus' name. We are battling against seen and unseen creations by the great I Am. For everything was created by Him, in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through Him and for Him. Colossians 1 verse 16 We need to pray to and worship our Heavenly Father every single day, not just on Sundays, but also on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and especially on the Sabbath, Saturdays. The enemy and his minions do not take a day off. Why do we? The enemy and his minions are constantly leading souls onto the wide path of eternal damnation. We need to be alert and refute any false teachings and evil doctrines by calling it out. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan disguises himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 14 Not with violence and anger, but with love and guidance to the Word of God. Some of them don't even mention sin and repentance during their sermons. In fact, the Pope who runs the Catholic religion just recently announced that he will be allowing Catholic priests to bless same-sex marriage. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 18 verse 22. This is all part of allowing and welcoming the spirit of Jezebel. And don't let its name fool you. Just because it's called Jezebel, it's not a female spirit. This spirit is a demon who will be seductive, manipulative, influential, and destructive into making men and women believe that love is love and that it's not a sin to adjust God's word to fit our beliefs or our way of life. These are what the Bible calls fools. But we should not hate fools or judge them because they don't agree with the Word of God. This is because they simply don't understand it and will never want to hear the Word. What they decide to ultimately do is up to them and our Heavenly Father. We are not here to judge anyone or condemn anyone. Our Heavenly Father decides who He will save and not save, not us. We are just messengers of the Word. If Yahweh decides to save them, it is His prerogative. He is our Creator. Woe to him who strives with him who formed him, a pot among earthen pots. Does the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or your work has no handles. Isaiah 45, 9 Many of our political and religious leaders carry the spirit of Jezebel. And I want you to understand, politics is the religion of this world set up by the enemy. Society preaches its own doctrine, which goes against anything righteous in the eyes of Jehovah God. Since society is the guide of this world, many are falling from the word and guaranteeing a second death in the lake of fire. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of full suffers harm. Proverbs 13, 20. Remember that Satan is the ruler of this world. Therefore, we can't impose our beliefs on anyone. Just like Jehovah has given us free will to make our own decisions, we need to follow in those steps and not force anyone to follow His word. What we should do if they choose not to listen to the warnings is pray for them. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. James 5.16 I repeat, prayer is one of the most powerful tools provided to us by our Creator. With prayer, we are able to connect directly with God. Part of building our armor is to teach the word of our Lord with love and compassion not with judgment and hatred. For God did not appoint us to wrath, 
but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5 9. We don't have the responsibility to save anyone. Let me repeat that. Jehovah God, the great I am, does not hold us responsible to save anyone. Our responsibility is to teach and guide souls to Yahweh. He will take care of the rest, since He knows everyone's heart. Nevertheless, if He warn the wicked to turn from His way, and He does not turn from His way, He shall die in His iniquity, but you would have delivered your soul. Ezekiel 33, 9. We have allowed the world, through society, to dull our moral senses. What was once evil is now good, and what was once good is now evil. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Isaiah 5, 20. The conscience of many have become desensitized from our moral compass, always at the expense of others. Cain, Jezebel, King Herod, Delilah are just a few of Bible characters that use their seared conscience to inflict pain and death for their own means. The numbing of their conscience helped them believe they were doing the right thing and create their own truth, even when it went against God's word. And that's what's happening now with many political leaders and many church leaders. This is how the enemy makes you believe that your sin is okay. It happened then and it's happening now. A family member once asked me, how can she teach the word of God to her son who doesn't want anything to do with the Bible? I told her the same thing that Jesus said. We do it by planting seeds. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop. Matthew 13, 4 and 8. I told her to quote scriptures out loud around him, provide him with affirmations from the book of Proverbs, even bring up solutions to his problems using situations from the Bible. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 13, 9. Jesus said that all we need is faith as big as a mustard seed. A mustard seed. Once we have placed that into their hearts, then it will either sprout and produce fruit, or it will dry up and die. Because of your little faith, he told them, for truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17, verse 20. Saints, we can't go around judging and condemning sinners. We also cannot let our feelings dictate the scriptures. We need to teach the word and encourage and uplift each other. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, as you are already doing. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 For we are children of light, not children of darkness. We are the beacon of hope in a world desperate for light. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or the darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 5 We know there are many religions with many gods. But the only true God is Yahweh, the one that spoke to existence. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Psalms 33, 6. The one who parted the sea, created a pillar of smoke during the day and a pillar of fire during the night to guide his people, the Jew. He touched the devil from heaven unto this earth and sent his word who became flesh to walk among us as the Son of Man in order to save our soul. For God loved the world in this way. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, verse 16. Think about that. The Word 
created everything. And he sent his word to become flesh and walk among us. Then why are we distorting Jehovah? Why do we say we believe but have no faith? We say we are Christians but let others lead us into violence, into twisting the truth and hating each other instead of loving and caring for one another. No matter our beliefs, our race, our diverse customs, and the color of our skin, we need to love and care for each other. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians 6, 16-17 We need the faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had when King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the burning furnace. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. But even if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold statue you set up. Daniel 3, 17 and 18. This is faith. This is putting on the armor of God in order to live by his word on a daily basis and teach others how they too can be saved and put the armor of God for protection. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. 2 Timothy 3.16 As we build our armor, we also reinforce the hedge of protection around us. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms 91.1 Don't fall for the enemy's schemes and lies. Trials and tribulations makes us better human beings and better servants of the Almighty. How? By strengthening our faith. Consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. James 1, 2-3 I'm ending this episode with a testimony from a gentleman by the name of Dominic J. Morrow. When he was much younger, he was shot and had a near-death experience, which is called an NDE. He went straight to hell. The story of his experience was so impressionable on me, I don't even want to experience it in a nightmare. This is why we need to put on our armor and continue to spread the word. Because we don't want to end up with this gentleman ending and we definitely don't want anybody else to. Here's his story. Thank you for watching, and God bless you. And as I approached him, he said, hey, do you have a light? It was a bright green flash, and I smelled sulfur. It smelled like burning matches. Remember, everything moved in slow motion, and I fell back. Uh, when I fell backwards, this is where the supernatural part started. This is where my life changed. Um, when I fell backwards, Everything went blank, dark. But this kind of darkness is not a darkness that's here on earth. Um, this darkness is alive. But the weirdest part was when I fell backwards, I started instantly falling forward and I was getting more and more afraid. But this is a different type of fear. It's not a fear like here on earth. It was a different type of laugh. It was a demonic hatred. Like I just knew whatever was laughing at me hated me hated me more than like with anything you can even describe. See, people don't realize that when you leave the physical body, you still have your five senses. You still, you still have them, but the thing is they're upgraded, they're modified. They're very more modified. I mean, times a million. Your sight, your hearing, your vision, your touch, everything, is, you still have those things. I see when the, when the flames, they come up. And the first thing I noticed were these demons, things, they're the most grotesque, smelliest and their eyes were glowing yellow some of them eyes were red some of them were like 13 feet tall some of them were this big there's i would say hundreds of thousands of pits and then with, within each pits of thousands of people uh it was horrible you have people who look like bone i would say they look like bones some of them were bones with actually flesh hanging off a lot of these these demons they wanted to attack me they wanted to rip me apart and i can just feel the hatred the hatred that they have for mankind 
the hatred that they have for us, it is beyond anything. It is beyond, and you can feel it's ancient, and you can feel it is powerful. It is power in their hate. When I tell you, the tortures, the, the, wow. Um, but one thing that I noticed when you're in hell and when you're internally in the spirit body, you can look at a person inside hell and you know why they're there. I've seen people there for unforgiveness. I've seen even some teen, pre-teens in hell. And that's another thing. When you move in hell, there's no really walking around when he's showing you. It's like you instantaneous. It's like teleportation. See, that's the thing. Uh, people don't understand. Time doesn't exist in eternity. It doesn't. The clock stops. Of course, they're going to tell you things that are right on purpose because they call it familiar spirits, which I saw them ascending and descending from hell. But as I'm looking at the cells, all of a sudden, I feel the... Again, now this time I'm standing on a cliff, a dead forest, but it had a path on it. And on the path, there was a people, uh, it was, as far as the eye can see, they were all chained together. They were all chained up and they looked like pure skeletons. They had, none of them had flesh on them at all. And as you look further ahead to where they were going, it was gates. And it was a wall that was so high and the gates were so high that it, it was, I couldn't understand. Those were the gates of hell. So the place that I thought was already hell wasn't even the beginning. The tortures, the, the, wow.